Hey, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 162 or part 4 of our dressing room. So let's open up Unity. Uh, we left off, we had just finished creating a few prefabs for our weapons and we're getting this warning here that we can't uh, use the new keyword with mono behaviors and we'll take care of that but uh, right now I just want to create an array here for our prefabs. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the asset manager script And I'm just going to create an array down here. So we'll use public game objects. And I'm just going to call this weapon mesh. I'll save that off. And I'm going to go back into Unity. And it should be exposed after it's done compiling everything. And there we go. So I've got three made so far. I don't want to make them all just yet because we're going to be doing some modifications. And you know, if I had, let's say, 20 different weapons, I don't want to have to hook all 20 of them up and uh, potentially lose them along the way and then have to hook uh, all of them back up again. But let's just go ahead and we'll add all three in no particular order. I'm going to save that off. And we're just going to head right back into Mono Develop. And I'm going to come over to the changing room. And up here we're getting our reference to CA. And like I said before, I'd like to move that out to a Master Manager class. Uh, but down here is where we're holding uh, the index to our character model. And then of course we have the character model name that we're using. Just so we can display down below what model is currently being displayed. And we're actually uh, creating a game object for the actual character model itself. I'm going to rechange this variable because we're going to have a lot of different models. We're going to have weapon models or weapon meshes, character meshes, uh, potentially armor meshes. And model to me just isn't quite descriptive enough. So I'm just going to right click on it, hit refactor, and I'm just going to hit rename. And I'm actually going to switch this to character mesh. And if we hit OK, we'll notice if we go through, all of the models got switched to character mesh automatically. And I forget who it was that pointed that out to me on uh, YouTube, but uh, thanks for the tip. It definitely saves time. So I'm going to come down oh, right above the uh, character model stuff, and I'm going to create a few more privates. And the first one's going to be an int, and I'm going to call this weapon index. And of course, I'll start that off at zero. And I'm not going to bother displaying the name of whatever weapon it is. I'm just actually going to display the actual, the, the index number of it. And I'm not going to be bother grabbing an actual, like setting a game object for it, because I'm not going to be uh, rotating it or moving it around while the player is actually holding it. So all I really need is just this weapon index. So let's come down to the bottom here. And, well, not quite the bottom. I'm going to go right above the instantiate character model. And I'm going to create another private function, which does not return anything. And I'm just going to call it instantiate uh, weapon model. And I'm going to leave it blank for now. I just want the function there because I want to call that right after instantiate character model in the start function. And we'll have to add some GUI to it a little later on. And to be honest, I'm actually going to move these out of the on GUI into their own separate function. And I'll put that right above this one. Uh, just to keep the GUI function really uh, clean. So I'll make a private void. And I'm going to call this rotate player mesh. Oh, I guess we're calling it character. So character model and of course I'll just take these cut paste them right in and like I said I'm doing this just to keep the on, on GUI method uh, very easy to read there we go and we're going to want another 
uh, function in here that we'll add in a minute that actually allows us to change the uh, weapon mesh. Uh, but first, let's take a look at the instantiate method. We're going to want to instantiate the, the weapon in the player's weapon mount. And if we go ahead and look at the prefabs that we made for our character, let me close some of these up. Uh, here's my player characters. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one we take. Uh, we don't really know how to get to it. And let's actually just drag one, put them in into the scene. And let's just take a look at everything. So he's got his animations. Uh, we do have a weapon mount already set up. At least you, you should have one by now. And right now we're actually drilling down to where these mounts are. And let me just check here right hand. <laughs> uh, I believe this is my weapon mount. Whoops, wrong key. Let me just select him again. I accidentally selected the potion behind him. And it was right here. I'm pretty sure that's where my weapon mount was. Uh, let me just drag an actual weapon into game and we'll see. So I'll grab the sword. And I'll just place it here and it shows up there in our hierarchy. I'll just take that, drag it right onto that mount. It says I'm losing prefab, that's fine, I'm just testing stuff. And with the sword selected, uh, where'd it go? Right hand, mount three, there's my sword. I'm going to reset its position. And I'm going to try, well, before I reset the the uh, rotation, I'm actually going to start it and take a look. And I'll have to turn off Maximize so I can actually see it in the uh, inspector here. Or not the inspector, but the scene view. And obviously the rotation needs to be fixed up, so that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to reset the rotation now. And that actually looks like it's perfect. So we start it up, we take a look, and you know, that's, uh, that's pretty good for being in his hand. It could use a little bit of tweaking, but right now I just kind of want to get a good grasp that it's, it's passable at least. Alright, so let's stop that. And I'm actually going to change this mount to be called... Actually, before I do that, I'm going to reset the prefab. So I'm going to reconnect. And that mount three, you notice there's no more sword there. I'm actually going to call this weapon mount. And I'm going to, yeah, I'll leave it capitalized so I can easily pick out the ones that I've changed. And now what I'm going to want to do is go back to my base character class and expose these mount points so I can just basically select the character and drag and drop these in instead of having to type out this huge string that we're going to be using to find where the weapon mount is in that character's hierarchy. Uh, so let's go in. I don't think I have base character open. I do actually have it open. And it derives from mono develop. That's good. Or mono behavior, sorry. So I'm just going to make a public game object. And for now, I'm just going to say weapon mount. And I'll save that off. We'll head back into Unity and let's select the base character. Or the base of the character, I should say. And we now have our weapon mount. So I'm going to come down and select this weapon mount, drag it on, and there we go. Uh, now we can just access this weapon mount instead of typing in that string. So I'm going to save that off. Uh, let me just check the player prefab. This was the muscular guy. And if we take a look, nothing's assigned there, so we'll just reconnect, or sorry, apply. And if we take a look, it's automatically set. Now we're going to have to do that with the fat guy too. So I'll just select the muscular one, and we'll select the fat male, drag him onto the scene, and do the same thing for him. And it was actually called mount 3, so I'm actually just going to search for it. And there's all my mounts. And there's mount three. Perfect. So I'm going to clear that out. 
and because I selected it, if we look, it's under the fat male, and you go down, and there we go, and it's the same one. So let's reconnect this guy, or I should say apply this guy, and take a look at his prefab, and it's now set, and double check the male. Uh, we did not change the name, so let's do that now. There we go, and apply him again. Uh, check his prefab, what mount, what mount, perfect. We'll get rid of him. I'm just gonna save him off. I'm gonna head back into Mono Develop. I'll head over to my changing room, and in the instantiate weapon part, uh, I'm just gonna start off by instantiating a weapon for us. So I'm just going to cut and paste our old instantiate line. And we'll go ahead and make a new variable name here. So game object. And I'm just going to call it W for weapon right now. And we're going to have to change what's being instantiated as well as where it's being instantiated. So let's start off with what's being instantiated. Now we still want CA. That refers to our character assets. So I'm going to use dot, and this time I'm going to want my weapon mesh. And the mesh, of course, we're looking for, I'll just cut and paste the variable in, is weapon index. I'll just paste that in. And then the place we actually want to instantiate it is actually going to be uh, in our weapon mounts position as opposed to our transform position. So we're going to want to get a reference to that. So let's come up to the top here, and right after the instantiate character is where I'm actually going to try to get a reference to my player now. So let me see, we'll come up here, and I'll add a private. And I believe I called it player character. There we go, and I'm just going to call that PC. And I'll... Instead of just cutting and pasting the other line, we'll, we'll just type it out. And my time machine failed. So we'll say PC is equal to game object dot find item with tag. Make sure you get the singular, not the plural. And of course, the tag we're looking for is going to be player. So we'll have to go make sure that our prefabs have that tag. And we're going to want to get the component. And the component we're going to want to get is player character. So let's go ahead and we'll make sure that our prefabs have this tag. So I'm going to close down my art assets for now. We're in the prefabs. Uh, player character. Here's my fat male. He does not have the right tag. So let's just set it here. And the muscular male. We'll just set that there. And we'll just double check to make sure they saved. So I'll come back in. And we're calling a PC. So I'm going to come back down to my uh, line right here. And the place we want to actually instantiate now is actually going to be PC dot weapon mount dot transform dot position. And we'll delete the old transform.position. Of course, we could have just put a period in there and saved ourselves typing out the transform position. But I like to actually see the IntelliSense telling me that uh, these properties are actually available. So let's save that off. And actually, let's go test it. So we'll recompile. Uh, I'm not seeing anything there. All clear. And let's start it off. So we got the muscular male, and it says it could not find the weapon mount, but that's from our uh, old weapon mount it was using. And we're not instantiating the weapon. Uh, let me just quickly select the character in-game, just, just to make sure. Oh, we are instantiating it. It's just on the ground. And that's because we're not parenting it. So that's fine. We'll just say w.transform.parent is equal to PC dot weapon mount dot transform. Now that's going to parent it right. 
Uh, we might have to adjust the rotation and, uh, well, the position we shouldn't have to adjust, but let's just test it out and make sure. So there we go. He's actually holding it, but if you notice, it's uh, being held backwards. So I'm just actually going to quickly select it and just take a look at it in the hierarchy here. Uh, its position really doesn't matter when the number is that small. You can zero those out, but that's fine. Uh, what we actually want to do is reset the rotation to 0, 0, 0. So we've played around with rotation before and we instantiated. So we'll just come back into our script and we're going to say w.transform.parent. Well, I'm sorry, not parent, dot rotation. And if you look here, uh, returns a quaternion. I'm just going to set that equal to quaternion dot identity. Actually, I'm sorry, we don't want quaternion dot identity. We actually want to zero it out. So we're going to make it equal to a new quaternion. And there's four properties it takes here, X, Y, Z, and W. And if you really want to learn more about quaternions, uh, just hit Wikipedia. Uh, there's benefits between using quaternions and Euler angles, and there's also downsides. Uh, quaternions tend to be a little more complex, uh, but you, they don't have the clamping issues, I believe it's how it's referred to. Uh, I'll let you investigate that if you actually want to learn a little bit more about it. But for now, we just want to zero everything out. So I'm just going to put four zeros. I'll save that off. We'll head back into Unity and let it recompile, start it up. And voila, there we go. We got the weapon in the right spot. Now, of course, when we're changing our guy around, we actually lose the uh, weapon. Uh, but this is long enough for this tutorial. Uh, we've got the first weapon instantiating. If we want to work ahead, uh, the next thing we're going to do is start working on being able to uh, instantiate uh, the other weapons in our array, as well as uh, keeping the exact same weapon equipped when we switch meshes. Anyway, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.